We have another ABC 17 storm track weather alert as I am tracking another tornado warning across the area. We have seen several warnings this evening. More in the forecast as we are seeing this storm system right now. This tornado warning is overhead of Morgan as well as Miller County. 1137 into Wardsville 1144 again right around 1144. That's when it's going to be rolling into the capital city. We need you in your safe space. Now you have 20 minutes to get everything that you need from the National Weather Service. They've upgraded this tornado warning to a potential catastrophic large violent tornado. They've added what they call a catastrophic tag. So this is likely a very large and violent tornado bearing down on the city of Jefferson City. One of as Kevin has already said one of our most uh, densely populated regions. So everyone in Jefferson City, everyone near Wainwright, everyone near North Jefferson, along that Highway 54, Highway 50 uh, connector need to be in their safe places uh, right now because we're looking at a very, very dangerous situation here uh, in the capital. Breaking news on ABC 17 News this morning. Time right now is 1:59. We, of course, are continuing to follow after the tornado outbreak that we have been seeing all across Mid Missouri. Right now, emergency crews are working to assess some damage in parts of Jefferson City. Of course, that's where we've been seeing some of the heaviest and the hardest hit damage in the area. The devastation is real here. I am standing here. This is Lakeisha. She runs the only 24-hour daycare in Jefferson City. We have, you know, 78 students. Um, that attend the daycare overnight, uh, weekends, and I mean, it, the building is gone. We're right off of 54 as you're coming in um, from the Eldon and Eugene area. I'm going to step off this camera. I'm going to have my uh, photog here pan around. Uh, you can see Amron's obviously here. Uh, power lines are down. I was out here. <sighs> 30 minutes after all this happened. I've been here 25 years and this is um, this is definitely a surreal moment for me and I know a lot of people um, in this area as well. This place was flooded with people about an hour ago as people were getting out of their uh, homes and everything to come look at the damage. I was just informed Lucas Geisler spoke to a representative at University Hospital. They said they have had no patients flown to them from the Eldon or Jefferson City area. So that is a, a bit of good news right now because they are the trauma center. If, if there was something traumatic that happened, a traumatic injury, that is where they would be sent to. So as of right now, they have not had any patients sent to them. I am going to bring Lucas Geisler in. He just spoke to a business owner um, back here. And Lucas, I'm going to just hand it off to you. Yeah, sure. I, it's this U-Haul store behind us, Ashley, that I spoke to, Dominique Maxwell, who I, this is his store. He said he was just promoted to this store about 11 months ago. And so this is his first big sort of crisis. We do want to give you a look right now. Um, if you want to look right here, you can see the down power line. This one completely snapped in half and you can see the power lines down on the road. I'll have uh, my photographer John uh, uh, pan across here. You can see the lines are just sitting down. This is Jackson Street we're looking at. You can see right behind me. This is a car that was obviously right in the middle of what is said to be a tornado right here in Jefferson City. I am on Ellis Boulevard. Now you can see just the damage that was done. Every window of this van is completely shattered out. Wood chips are in the side of this van right here. I'm Jared Lee. I work at Riley Chevrolet in Jefferson City. I'm the business manager and we have we're seeing some devastating losses tonight. Uh, devastating. This is actually his yeah, office. My office right here, and which is no longer so. And if you get close enough and you listen closely enough, you can hear the water and the sprinklers. This is our delivery area right here that we, we store our new cars in for ready for delivery. The glass is in the walls. It's the shards are in the walls. These cars were brand new hours ago. It's bad. Obviously, it could be a lot worse and could have been people here and people hurt or killed. So it can all be rebuilt. So it's not a major thing. Absolutely. And that will to rebuild here in Jefferson City is already apparent this morning. Last time I left you guys, we were just kind of assessing the damage at Riley Chevrolet. We are now at the Toyota dealership. Take a look at what the storm did. You can see that it has twisted up and mangled these brand new vehicles. Um, and you can essentially see where the storm really came through because there's a pattern. I'm gonna take Jack this way just a little bit. There's a pattern. You see these are up like this. Well, so are these cars and these trucks down here. This was a brand new car. Brand new. They said not one vehicle on this lot 
is not completely damaged. I am here right now with Task Force One team leader Doug Westhoff. Hello. Give us the rundown right now of what what are you doing right now? What are search and rescue efforts like right now? Uh, right now we're focused primarily on uh, Hawthorne Apartments, which is just down Ellis here. Uh, we're augmenting Jeff City Fire Resources. Our teams are working together. Uh, there's a dozen or 14 uh, fourplexes there in that apartment complex that have some have some significant damage. Um, it requires that we go from unit to unit, both on the lower lower level and the upper level. Uh, some of those buildings are damaged enough that they required structural assessment by a structural engineer before we felt comfortable in entering. Uh, some some decisions have to be made about uh, uh, where we can and can't go and be safe with that. We're running canines down there right now. Uh, we don't have any indications that we have anybody trapped. We don't have any indications that anybody's missing. This is a peace of mind and a comfort since that is the most uh, seriously impacted area that we've identified thus far as far as having people in that immediate area when that uh, when that tornado touched down. Here's a look at the rough timeline. You can see 1110. That's where that initial siren went off. 1139, there was a confirmed large tornado near Jefferson City. This was via the National Weather Service. 1140, we saw that reactivated siren. And then 1147, the first damage reports came in. Moving in a couple minutes ahead of time now to 1141. There are those contrasting colors that is indicating that tornado is arriving right uh, near Ellis Boulevard where Ashley is where we saw a lot of that damage as we work a couple more minutes ahead 1144. You can see that contrasting even more that is working through the area moving ahead to 1147 moving to the north and the east not quite where Joe is at 1140. 47, but it's quickly working its way there. 1149 now overhead of the ninth grade center and working out of the area by 1150. So it does seem quick moving, but really it took nine minutes to go two miles. So it was fairly slow moving track as we have seen a lot of damage in the path of this tornado. Deborah, think about that. If it stays this way, five injuries in a city of about 45,000 people with a tornado that hit the city, the capital city, yeah. and if it remains at that, how amazing mm -hmm. will that be? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I think that's what we're all hoping for at this yeah. point, especially on the anniversary of the uh, very deadly Joplin tornado. More than 150 uh, people killed you know. in that uh, EF5 tornado that mm -hmm. hit uh, on the same day that this one hit last night yeah. in uh, Jefferson City versus the one that happened eight years ago in mm -hmm. Joplin. I do also want to mention that we've been wall-to-wall -wall coverage since almost around 7 o'clock last night. In about one minute, we're gonna, it's going to be 5 o'clock at the top of the hour and uh, we're going to continue our coverage this morning. Now, I want to show you some images from Pulaski County. That's where some more damage has been uh, reported. Some of the images, pretty incredible. It, it may be hard for you to see. Uh, these are coming from the Tri-County Fire Protection District. Um, a lot of what you're seeing there is debris in the weeds, and now you see debris in the trees. Some of it looks like siding, perhaps. At Thomas Jefferson Middle School, we're in the gymnasium. I'm going to give you a look at what's going on right now. These are all volunteers. They're working furiously to get uh, cots set up for the, uh, for the people here who have come to uh, Thomas Jefferson Middle School for shelter. We're told, uh, I was just told in the last 10 minutes, about 45 uh, people have shown up here to the school so far. You can't step anywhere without stepping on something that does not belong there, whether it be uh, wood, power lines, trash, glass. This is, this is honestly a very unsafe area. As you can see, these power lines down right here, I am told they are dead power lines. But if you are in this area, I know a lot of people are starting to wake up. They're going to want to know what happened. Please, please, please avoid this area if you can. We'll do the best job that we can to show you what is going on. But this is still a very active area, and it's very unclear always with power lines being down like this, especially with the rain and the puddles. It's just best to just stay away from them if you can. Uh, Mayor Kerry Turgeon is coming. Mayor Turgeon, hi. Hey, how are you? Hey, uh, Lucas with ABC 17 News. Hi, it's good to see you. We're live right now for ABC 17 News this morning. Um, uh, do you mind just giving an update to the people out there of what's going on right now in the city? Well, as you can see, a lot of devastation right now, and we are, you know, assessing this. We've been working through the night, public safety officials, 
uh, Jefferson City Police and Fire Departments have been working uh, all night long and agencies from cities all around mid-Missouri have uh, converged and all hands on deck and they're working through the situation. We've been hearing a lot of reports, sorry Ashley, of, of minor injuries to people so far. Uh, is that what you're hearing as well? Do you know the extent of as far as, as far as people being hurt from this storm? So far like you, I've only heard minor, which is amazing considering the the extent of the damage that you can see and so uh, I hope that is the case we're certainly praying that that's the case I want to show you the damage that this tornado has caused to these residents at Hawthorne apartments here Sarah's has our camera she's gonna turn it so we can see the damage to these apartments the roof completely gone now this is just evident right here as to why our meteorologists say to stay on the lowest level if if you can and go to the back of the house in those rooms that are away from windows away from doors because this right here is what could happen luckily we know right now that every resident was able to get out safe and we don't know how many of these residents were injured when this tornado blew through i'm going to show you behind me you can see this is the pool from hawthorne apartments that iron fence is torn down as well and this one looks to be a lot of damage as well as you can see there's actually water gushing through i'm not sure if you can kind of hear it in the background looks like pipes maybe have bursted when this tornado went through first of all i think most of you should know there's a lot of devastation throughout the state last night uh, a lot of damage here in jefferson city uh, we had uh, fatalities over in southwest missouri area last night uh, multiple injuries that were reported over the night and still trying to assess the damage uh, that's out there today. But you know, one of the things that I just want to highlight of, of all the agencies, the work they did last night, whether it was the police departments, whether it was the sheriff's office, whether it was SEMA, whether it was the Department of Public Safety here in Jeff City. But I can't say enough for all the people that were out there last night trying to make sure everybody got good warning. Uh, everything seemed to work like it was supposed to be in a very difficult time uh, last night. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're still assessing damage this morning. This is down Miller Street. We are right outside Simonson Ninth Grade Center. You can see Jefferson City Police. Uh, those officers that uh, Lucas just mentioned were, are staffing up uh, these certain intersections. We are inside uh, the uh, zone that they have closed off. Uh, and I want to show you, we are getting our first look in the daylight hours of Simonson Ninth Grade Center. Take a look at uh, it's just battered by the storm. Windows, basically, most every single window here at Simonson ninth grade center busted out. You can see uh, very obviously a lot of internal damage as well, uh, given that there was heavy uh, damage to the roof of this building. Um, when I came out here at 1145, this place was a complete disaster. And I think for what they have had to deal with, they have done a, a swell job of getting this off of the roadway. Um, as you can see, the convenience store back here is completely destroyed.